Thank you for staying with us on Morning Express. Now, yesterday, the Minister of the FCT, Barry Stengas and Wiki, marked one year since assuming office as FCT Minister. He celebrated this uh, by coming up with a media parley, uh, which brought together media juggernauts, and uh, he made some quite strong statements, especially concerning the crisis in the PDP, but he also touched on the developments that have happened in the FCT in the last one year, prominently on infrastructure. Now, to delve more into these matters, I'm now being joined by Prince Godswell Edwards, who is a social commentator and change impact maker in the studio. Hello and good morning, Prince. You're good, welcome to good, good the morning. program. Good morning. Always a pleasure to be here. Always a pleasure to see you. Thank you. Very quickly now, you are a resident of the FCT. You have seen the tremendous strides by the FCT minister in the last one year. Exactly. In terms of infrastructure, security has uh, to a large extent, you know, stabilized in the FCT, That's amongst true. other things. But how would you rate the performance of the minister in the last one year? Sincerely speaking, I'm, I must say that, you know, the FCT minister, who is known as Mr. Project, you know, having been um, an executive governor of um, a rich Niger Delta state, that's River State, for eight years with so much impact in terms of infrastructure, development and good governance given to his people, you know, I wasn't expecting anything less, you know, and um, the, the Mr. President had, you know, you know, uh, done very amazing by the choice of um, Barista Jens Wiki as FCT minister. And we have seen in the last one year a whole lot of um, abandoned projects that have not been attended to for almost um, eight years, you know, being put together. And um, a whole lot of infrastructural development, this organization, the, the city has um, once again won the amazing look of um, the federal capital territory, you know, that, 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 that it's, that's extremely an amazing um, 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 success story so far. You know, the FCT minister has done very well for me. And I feel that, you know, as a lot of people celebrate one year in public office, you know, it's not out of place for the FCT minister to also celebrate because for us, it's a celebrated that is well deserving. A celebration, sorry, well deserving. You know, he's done a whole lot in terms of you know, development, you know, look at most of the roads, the connecting roads. Now you, you see there was a time that the FCT was almost becoming like Lagos because of holdups everywhere, but now there's more like opening of roads and routes. So everywhere is functional and, you know, the, the people are happy to see that there's more orderliness. And in just one year, he's been able to revamp a whole lot of projects in the FCT, and especially security. We, we got to a point where there was so much of insecurity in the FCT, and despite the large amount of security checkpoints, you know, but some of those things have been curtailed. And you can see from his media party yesterday, you know, some of his responses shows you that he's willing to do more, he's more determined, and this is just the beginning. And for us, we are happy to see that. Now, most of, um, you know, most people in the FCT would argue that, yes, the minister has uh, been on his toes, he has been working assiduously to ensure that uh, the road network in the FCT is uh, opened up and which you have also have attested to. However, people share a varying opinion with regards to how much attention the FCT minister is given to other sectors. You know, yesterday I, I threw a question at him uh, hinting on agriculture, health, education, transportation and all of that. We know that security has sort of stabilized. and. Talking about security in particular, one of the reasons why security has been an issue in the FCT, an age-long issue in the FCT, is because of taxes that are being used to perpetrate some of these acts, exactly. acts, especially kidnappings or the term which we all know as one chance. One chance, yes. What do you make of his lack of attention, in-depth attention to other sectors of, uh, you know, the general sphere in the FCT? See, one thing I know about governance is that some certain people have their own policy direction or area of focus. And um, the most important thing is that nothing is being left untouched. You know, governance is a gradual process. It's a progressive process. You know, you have to, instead of getting everywhere rowdy, look at sectors step by step. But yes. when you say 
not paying attention. It's impossible. If you might say, oh, in terms of percentage, probably he's giving them um, road infrastructure and, um, um, and projects. More progress. Um, you know, more progress, which is something he's known for, he's, yeah. he believes. And then, then, and then these projects are not just cut across only um, road infrastructures. You know, also in terms of uh, infrastructural development, in terms of uh, the health, you know, schools, renovations and all. You know, so it's a gradual process. A man who wants to develop his people would begin to build the infrastructures. Then after the infrastructures, and I believe that as the infrastructures are being put together, you can see a whole lot of changes in terms of the uh, um, 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 sectors in the FCT, some of the uh, agencies of government in the FCT that has had to have um, a change of leadership. These are part of the things that you see when a government is progressive and willing to bring change. You don't just um, bring most no belt in a day. Yes, it's visible because we can see that the roads are being constructed, the bridges are being constructed, infrastructure, the state is becoming, the FCT is clean and all, and green. You know, the street lights are working. You can see a lot of streets are working now and the roads are very amazing. These were things that were not there over a period of time. So these are visible infrastructures that is not hidden, but you don't know what is going on the back end in terms of policy, the direction of government, formulation of government in terms of administrative drive, in terms of putting some certain things in place. So it, we are quick to see what is visible, but what is behind the scene, you know, that is working to see the visibility of these things, you know, might not be seen by us because these are administration, administrative documents and all. But I can tell you vividly that um, Yosef Wike is known for showing dividends of democracy to his people. And if he's been saddled with the responsibility, he's someone who wants, who always wants track records. He's someone who prides himself as a change agent. So that we are not seeing everything. It's just a matter of time to become very visible. I don't think that um, the health sector has been neglected because the last time I think I found myself in, a, in, a, in an environment where people were throwing a whole lot of concerns about various sectors, public opinion, and I was excited to even hear that there's an inter intervention even in the health sector in terms of most of the health facilities in the FCT. And, you know, I heard that from, from the public, you know, I did, haven't really gotten my facts right on that, but, you know, people don't just speak. You know, sometimes it's also very important that we hear what the people have to say from public opinion, depending on where we sit and hear conversation. So far, so good. I haven't really heard people, you know, say anything bad about the leadership of the FCT minister. But I feel that gradually those other hidden strategies that have been put in place will be open to the people. But I can tell you as an individual that he's doing well. Now, you, you, you are well known as a change impact maker. Excellently true. Specifically focusing on women and youth. Youth in particular, because exactly. I've had conversations with you in the past and you mentioned this. Exactly. And uh, the track records are there. However, yesterday the minister mentioned that uh, he had set up a secretariat, a mandate secretariat for women and another secretariat for the advancement and development of youth, you know, in different sectors, sports, arts, the creative uh, industry. industry and all of that. What do you make of this um, development and how do you think it can greatly impact the growth of uh, the creative industry, especially surrounding what the young people are doing, you, you, considering the fact that you work closely with young people. I've had the care of almost 20 years of my life in youth development and strategic positioning for young people and empowerment. So I speak as an expert in regards to this. You know, I always say any government that understands the value of young people and the women, you know, youth constitutes 75 percent population of society. And um, our mothers are always closer to the youth. The women are closer to the youth, so we put them almost on the same cluster. Now, when someone tells you he set up not just a statement, but setting up a secretariat, which is an, an institution to ensure that um, the youths and women are properly managed, you show you human capital development is the greatest. You know, human resource, human resource has a whole lot of offer a society and a society who refuses to invest on its youthful population, the energy that young people have to harness the potentials of our women and energy, which are impacting on the people because it's not just about the infrastructure and project. It's about those who will manage the resources of government, those who have the intellectual ability, those who are supposed to be best, first beneficiary of the infrastructure. Are they also properly prepared to be able to enjoy those infrastructures. So for him to have looked at um, the creative industry, 
the creative industry has a whole lot. Arts, you know, has a whole lot. I'm a lover of arts. Where I've been having an art exhibition, you know, in one of my projects, in an art exhibition to give people a platform to exhibit whatever they're doing, I think, on Monday. So, mm -hmm. so we believe that the creative industry has a whole lot. And those who have the ability to, to be creative are young people. You spoke about sports too yesterday, which is very welcoming. You know, I think um, before schools closed, we know we, we wrote to the FCT, my foundation, the Principal Youth Development Initiative, wrote to the FCT um, 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 Secondary Education Board on one of our projects we call Give Them Ball, Not Guns. We got approval, you know, which were, once schools resume we'll be, we'll, and we'll be able to reach out to about a few schools in the FCT and help them set up football clubs within the FCT with proper proper um, um, training and grooming. And now, like I said, talked about administration. These are things that you in the past can easily get, you know, you write, you know, it, it takes a whole lot for correspondence between organizations and government. But, you know, to see a government who's ready to work, these things have been put in place. And we're excited to see because we know the value of sports, sports development. If you don't give them value in, in exchange for vices, they continue to be vices within society. Young people need the right channel, the right mentorship, the right grooming, the right platform and the right empowerment. You cannot neglect them because they have the energy. You are life wire of every society. Even in the organizations that are making things happen from the military, military agencies of government. If you look at those, the workforce and those who are creating the right value, they are young people. The little officers and young officers who are there, they use yes. their youthful intelligence, their youthful, they take the youthful risks, the youthful, they dare. The, the energy. The energy. And all of them, the positive energy that is inside them. And yes. don't forget the youths have the energy. Exactly. Whether you like it or not, there's energy. Now, is it positive or negative? And it's in the place of government to create the enabling environment for the positive energy of young people to find true expression in society. And we do not just wait for government alone. We always call on well-meaning Nigerians, the private sector, non-governmental organizations, um, opinion groups, traditional rulers and churches and mocks, imams. Everybody must come together. Nation building is saddled on the responsibility of everyone. But you must be able to lead yourself and must see that you have track records. And if you have done something that is working for you, you must also share that knowledge with your neighbor now, now, and society. You, you, you mentioned that you have a program that uh, you, you're rolling out specifically for young people. How accessible is this to people, especially in either rural communities or satellite towns that might not have access to the city center uh, to be uh, able to, uh, to participate? Uh, our focus point is rural sports development and everything we have done for the Prince Seven Youth Development Initiative is focused on the communities, rural communities. On Saturday, we are giving part. We have a lot, something we call Pad the Girl. We are giving part in a community in Otaku. You know, and and we we've been doing that. It's not just restricted to secondary schools, rural secondary schools, where we're teaching young girls on personal hygiene, part the girl, personal hygiene. You know, say, you know, teaching them about you know you know feminine knowledge about who they are and how they should be able to expose themselves, take care of their body, take care of their mental health, and have opportunity to interact with people who can who can also hear their problems and reach out to them, you know. Yeah. So we're very concerned about the girl child, you know, and we've been doing that. But we said, no, it's not just going to be only in secondary schools, rural secondary schools. There are communities where, you know, young girls are going through a whole lot and do not have access to education. It's from where we can reach out to those communities that we can begin to give them opportunities to even go to school when we know that they have the right mindset. Because the th two things is this, I always tell people, not everybody is meant to go to school. There are contemporary ways of education, skills acquisition. So if someone who has the brain, and we find that you have the brain, your environment shouldn't restrict you from going to school. And someone who's skillful and who wants to be an entrepreneur, we should train you. We have a lot of partners like Take Care Africa that is distributing mobile phones and teaching young girls on farming and local businesses using technology to enhance their businesses. So we, we come up with projects because we believe that government can't do it alone. And we, have, we as people with knowledge and the right environment and the right mindset always want to contribute our own little quota towards national and, 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 and international development. And they say charity begins at home. We are residents in Abuja, you know, as the government does their own part. You to also do your own we part too, as, in our own little uh, way. In the, in the as, private as, sector. Yeah, citizens will always do our own part to support government ever because collectively there's no government without the people. And so the people must not always turn their back on government. After the elections, you continue to be part of the governance process. Well, well, let's uh, touch on another sector that is um, of, you know, serious concern, especially considering the fact that there is food crisis in the nation currently. And uh, that is on agriculture. 
Abuja is very close. The FCT is very close to Jos, which is a city that we all know produces, um, you know, food produced in mass quantity. That's true. However, there seems to be a disconnect between um, the FCT and Jos. I mean, these food produce are brought in here, but they are only meant for consumption. Where I'm driving at is in terms of manufacturing and processing. Mm. How do we move away from just the bringing consumer. in food items for consumption, day-to-day -day consumption, to manufacturing, processing, processing and, and export. even export mm. here in the FCT? Considering the fact that we have massive land in places like Idu, where it's obviously an industrial layout, but we also see factories there, industries there, that are not necessarily for food processing. I, I can assure you, if you look within the FCT, they have a whole lot of farms, you know, a lot of private ownership of farms, you know, in terms of agriculture. And if you also understand that the locals in FCT too are people who, uh, who believe so much in farming, one of their primary source of revenue is farming, you know. So I, I, I believe that, you know, the FCT minister who, in, you know, had a very good um, pass mark as governor of um, River State, looking at his antecedents as, as, as governor, you know, and also coming to be saddled with the responsibility of an FCT minister who has an experience of what a governor should do, which is almost the same role an FCT minister plays in the FCT to ensure that um, life and properties are protected and good life is given to the people. You know, agriculture has been on the top burner of our government right from the administration of um, Yaradua, you know, to especially the good luck Jonathan who focused more on agriculture. And I believe that every other government that have come in place have understood the power of um, growing our own food. Nigeria is blessed with energetic people and intelligent people. And we have a good um, and, um, um, land base and, yes. and very um, um, fertilized soil. So everybody knows that. And because of our population, you know, even when you look at what the first lady did some of recent, when she was able to come out open to show that she also has a garden you know, where she's producing food. So all of these are statements to add constantly, you know, educate our people and government of the importance of agriculture. I can assure you that the FCT minister has that also in his plan. If you look at the, you know, his discussion yesterday, that was a man who was speaking from a place of knowledge, a place of passion, and a place of ready to deliver service and dividends of democracy. So there's nothing that he spoke about that for me was about politics. It was not political about his statement, but he was speaking as an, an administrator. He was speaking as someone who understands governance and knows what the people want. So I can assure you that within the FCT, we already have a whole lot of, uh, of, 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 of personal, individual-owned farms, companies, yeah. and a lot of farms are here. We have a whole lot of farms in the FCT that are producing one thing or the other. And we also know that the people of FCT are people who love farming. You can see that even when you're up the sky, you know, flying. I mean, I mean take, take for example, know. the, the uh, cashew uh, trees that are found prominently in the FCT. Mm -hmm. Cashew is a multi-purpose Exactly. Of, uh, and, you know, and, and more can uh, be fruit. more can be done. More that. more can be done see them abandoned. from from the trees to the uh, to the fruit itself to the to the nuts the Not shells. No. It's the value chain. The is, value yeah, chain is large. It's large. But why aren't we looking towards that direction? I yeah. use this. I use this opportunity also to call on the FCT minister. You know. You know. Like you said, when Obasanjo. Um, gave the opportunity for these trees to be planted as a means of empowering the people of FCT because of their lands and all of that. You know, these trees, you know, has continued to play a pivotal role. But now, most mostly what we see is that you want to buy a, a plot of land. What they are more interested in is how to what you pay them for what each you of pay the trees. Them. Settlements. The settlement, you yes. know, but the people too have not been able to um, create more um, resources and more opportunities from the trees that are everywhere and these are cashews that are in some some areas of Nigeria even we find it difficult to even find one to lick yeah. or consume yes. and we all know that there's no home you go to in Nigeria that cashew and granola these are me, uh, our own traditional um, ways to entertain our visitors so mm -hmm. it means that even in internal consumption you know you still find a bottle of cashew tree very expensive when we have the raw materials to process and produce i believe that government at every point in time must focus more on in production like you said you know it doesn't mean that the best is not being done but they can improve and do better for me i do not believe in 
castigating government. I believe in encouraging governance because yes. governance is not just for one, it's for all. And we must embrace it. A government you do not embrace, you can never support. And a government you are not patriotic enough to support. Now, you don't support government because of you. You support government because you know that if government succeeds, you too are, you succeeding. are succeeding. Government is giving the responsibility to lead the people. Yes. And so if the people want good governance, the people must support that government. And if you don't feel comfortable with the government, you wait till the next election and then you show it by your exercising vote, by exercising your civil, your civil franchise. By franchise. Your, 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 your civil franchise as a citizen is not just to vote. It's also to be part and parcel of the government infrastructure, helping government to find its place and supporting government at every point in time. You can't you can criticize government constructively, but don't forget as patriotic Nigerians, we must continue to put the image of our government in the best possible form so that we can continue to enjoy the privilege of respect for our image internally and globally. Now, talking about uh, the issue of housing, especially in the FCT, uh, we I'm very sure you're aware of villages, in quotes, within the FCT, where you'd find Guzape, Guzape village, Asokoro, Asokoro village, this, that village. Mm, Otako, it's like Otako, Otako, village, Otako, Otako village. village. It's like in Meaning every, in every yeah. district, there is a village. Mm. And this village is a settlement that looks nothing close to the overall district where it is situated. People live in shanties, people, you know, it's nothing to write home about. And recently, um, a policy was rolled out by the president, which is the Renewed Hope City, mm. which has already begun in places like Karsana, in the FCT and, you know, other places like that. How do we quell this consistent up offspring of villages in the FCT, within the FCT, or how can we mitigate this and give these people better living options as opposed to what is obtainable at the moment, considering the fact that they might not be able to access homes within the Renewed Hope City. I can assure you, you know, that, for example, we are a people who understand. You see, I always like us not to copy too much, but also not to forget who we are as a people. Yes. The traditional Nigerian always knows that we all love villages and we all come from a village. And, and in as much as one in the urban city and the urban settlement, there's still a whole lot of indigenous who find themselves in contemporary villages. If you look at the um, Asokoro village, you know, many years ago, you could, about three, four years ago, you can rent a house there for 80,000, um, 100,000, 150,000. If you go there now, the least you can find a good self contained is nothing less than 350 to 400,000. Yes. So you see that there's an improvement. And if you look at the standard, of those settlements now is better off than it used to be. When we came, there used to be a um, bacher kind of using zinc and all, but now yes. you see block houses, well built and well defined environment. Our traditional um, inhabitants as a people always give room for villages. But, but you know, because but, of those, the settlement, you never forget that yes. there are indigenous who want to continue to settle, and not everybody has the, the necessary resources. And some people just like to find themselves in that village settlement. I've met a man who has so much resources to, to be able to live anywhere, but he just well, likes he being to around live the in village. That village settlement. He gives him the necessary peace he wants. He comes back and reminds himself of how a village boy should live. So, some certain people, you know, our villages are part of who we are as a people. We cannot write them off. We cannot chase them away. You know, yes, that is why you, you call them villages. All we can do is to ensure that the same standard of that the standard of living there is high, it's okay, it's conducive enough because we must always think about humanity as ourselves. With the space with the space of real estate development sweeping through the FCT, it's like every real estate company is always on the lookout for either an empty plot of land or a village settlement to buy land from and you know chase out the residents and it, there and it, how, how 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 safe are these residents living in these rural set um, village settlements within the fct considering the fact that at any time a developer might come and buy off the land and they will be homeless if you if you notice, they always give them new new settlement. It's never been even where we are today. You know, was a settlement in, in the, many years ago. But if you notice, that's why they resettled. It's called them settlement. It means yes. that when a development comes and catches up, those who do not want to be involved in the new 
you know new 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 Certain. development that has come in like i told you there are some people who traditionally will always look to settle in a rural environment if you bring development there they move to the next settlement you know that humanity on its own is not static nothing is static life evolves and revolves amongst itself so it's about who you want them to be for example let me also look at the fct fct you know has been known mostly for property development people have invested so much in real estate so the focal point is real estate and we're trying to see how at every point in time we advocate for in as much as what is more viable in the FCT is real estate. Everybody is talking about real estate. Let them also be production. Let them also be opportunity for green economy where people can plant and, and, and also grow food to feed the, the large trunk of uh, residents who keep moving into the FCT because they find it one of the safest places and one of the most um, um, developed um, um, cities in in Nigeria, yes. you know. So, but but the most important thing is the, the FCT creates a whole lot of revenue and resources from the real estate business. You know, is what do you do after generating that revenue? What other sectors are we willing to reinvest because the people must eat, and most times it's good to generate what you eat yourself. You know, everybody must begin to think of having a farmland. When we were growing up as children, we always had gardens in our homes, behind our houses. We find every little piece of land. You know, but every land now in the FCT is really focused on but real the, estate. The, the farmlands yeah. are being taken yeah. up by developers. That, that, that's what I'm saying. It's being focused on, 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 on real estate development and all. So it's in the place of government to create, create regulations. If you even look at our green areas where we used to have parks and, and gardens and all of that, a whole lot is happening to that. So uh, my joy is that, uh, that the FCT minister is focused on ensuring that the master plan, the original Abuja master plan is followed. Yes. Now, who does that shows you that he's willing to protect some certain entities that are supposed to be part and parcel of the formation of how Abuja should look like, how the FCT should look like. In the past, a whole lot has happened, you know. So I want to commend him for ensuring that, you know, the Abuja master plan is followed. We can develop on the master plan. We can update the master plan. But, you know, not letting some certain things, you know, uh, not being put in place shows you the weakness of governance. And for him to have showed his strength to protect the Abuja master plan and follow up on that shows you that he's a minister that wants to do something right and bring development. Don't forget the renewed hope agenda is to renew the hope of Nigerians. To tell you that no matter how it is, you must feel renewed in your spirit because a spirit that is not renewed, the mindset that is not renewed cannot be productive. We had had our ups and downs as a country. No, no economy or no society was built in one day. That's why we use the slogan, Rome was not built in a day. In in a day yeah. And as we continue to copy from other advanced democracies, let's not forget the many years it's cost them to be able to put together the, 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 the democracy they have today. And don't also forget that every country has its own peculiar challenges. We shouldn't copy and forget who we are. There are some internal things we must develop and conduct to hand. We must continue to use our cultures, our traditions to reshape in whatever we do. Who are we as a people? So let's not expect 100% growth. I believe in it. I'm a progressive mind. I'm a progressive and I believe in progressive reasoning. Things should be gradual. One little drops of water makes an ocean. So let's be more concerned about the little drops. If we what, can what? protect those drops. So Nigeria is a progressive country, you know, and every society we find ourselves should continue to progress under the ambience of who we are as a people. Let's not lose who we are, our originality, because we want to see what is going on in America, what is going on in Britain, what is going on here and there. No matter what we copy, let's continue to be original Nigerians in all we do. And know that gradually we'll get there. Well, well, Prince Edward, still staying with the issue of housing development in the FCT, uh, how do we curtail the um, spate of, you, you know, developers cutting corners in order to purchase lands which are not um, originally part of what should be sold to developers? It, people, people buy off green areas, people buy off land on waterways, people buy off properties that are not ordinarily supposed to house residential buildings exactly how do we you, you, how do you, you, we mitigate that like i spoke earlier it's important for us to commend the fct minister for ensuring that the master plan there's an abuja master plan that showcases different areas you know the green area and like i stated earlier it's bad you know that a lot of people and then also this also the land grabbing you find yes. people going to grab lands that don't belong to them papers now you can't even trust papers and that's why we have the ages the fct is there there are lands that are meant for area council. There are lands that are under the FCT, the AGs. You know, so this whole thing, they're all under 
you know, the, the, the master plan, you know, and there's not no land that is that is not properly allocated and those who are that are being reallocated to people, you know, and all of that. So I want I want um, the, the, the government to remain more firm in, the, in his resolution to ensure that Abuja is protected, not just about lives and properties, but Abuja as a city in terms of the land, the landmass. We are blessed with all of these, and, and these whole things are captured in, 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 in our systems, you know, you, you can coordinate and all of that. So let's continue to ensure that, you know, those who are using, who I know to, you know, to grab lands that was kept aside for green area continue to remain green. You cannot, they say, all work without play will make you dull. We need those green areas or our parks and gardens, our recreational environments to keep our children reminded on, of who they are as the people, play areas to, to enjoy leisure. And when you take that out, and then also going to most places that are areas of residence, and you realize that it has become a business district where there's a whole lot of pollution, noise pollution, and all of that. So the well-being, we are a civilized people, and we are a growing nation and economy that also wants to compete with committee of nations. Some of us who are who have also invested and believe so much in the real estate, we we, we, we want to continue to do that because developing the people are those who develop their society. Yes. The government creates the enabling environment, so the government must continue to play its role role in managing information policies that were able to streamline what uh, developers are doing no matter who you are protecting the image and integrity of Abuja and the Abuja master plan is very important it took us a whole lot to put the master plan together we can update and and continue because nothing is static we can continue to update our master plan but it must be under the basis of what we want abuja to look like not changing the dy the dynamics and direction and destroying what has been put together and built over time certainly uh, residents of the fct especially indigenous uh, people of the fct have cried out in recent years, several times, countless times, of marginalization, of not enjoying the benefits that come from their land. Now, in a brief uh, statement, how would you say that these people can be uh, brought into the system? How do we encourage inclusivity of FCT's indigents into the affairs of governance in the city? When we spoke about rural communities within the FCT. We all have rural villages in almost all our states and none of them have been chased about their are chased out of their original settlement. So in as much as development is ongoing, the place of the village and the settlement is very important. They all have village chiefs, they have traditional institutions. Let's develop them as they are and leave it, do, you know, leave them to enjoy the dividends of democracy. In as much as we are an FCT, they should be converted if you want to turn them from from rural settlements to urban settlements, you make sure that they are empowered. You know, we have schools that need to be paid attention to high health sector. We must give them basic amenities and make them feel that they are part of this government. And you know, and and, and uh, like I always know, there's always settlement for you know, no developer goes into a rural environment. You, in as much as you, the government is giving you a paper, they always try as much as possible to settle and use the villagers to do most of the projects so that you can give back to the people. It's also very important for government to continue to protect the interest of citizens of any society, not minding the development you're bringing to them. Human capital development is important. They must be co-opted into policies of government and also enjoy certain, a certain percentage of what the government has to bring in terms of its employment, in terms of empowerment and all of that because we all come from communities and it would be very bad if you go back home one day and realize that your, your village land where your ancestors were has been taken have, have been over taken, by, by, have, by have, the have, government by, or by, someone. Uh, so government or someone and you're being asked to leave. So in as much as it's an FCT and it's where we all come together as a seat of power, let's not forget those who were once upon, who, were, who, who, who lived there, who settled there before the government or development came. We must continue to treat everybody just. I believe in fairness. I believe in justice. I believe in equality. I believe in what is good for us for me is good for us one for all all for one this is what we preach every day being our brother's keeper so we oh, must right. continue to ensure that the mental health of the FCT people in terms of people who see development happening in their land and they're not part and parcel of that we, the government must look into that I know that the FCT minister is someone who believes in developing people he believes it's not just um, infrastructural development but human capital development oh, 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 yeah. all right yeah. I, I must thank you very much uh, Prince uh, Godswill Edwards for finding the time to come on the program thank I'm you. afraid this is where we wrap it up it's always a pleasure to be here thank you God very bless much. Nigeria and God bless the FCT thank you